If you've played The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for more than half an hour, chances are you've made Link eat something from his inventory. Or a lot of things, in fact. To be honest, I don't know how Link manages to stay so trim, because half the time he's stuffing his face with kebabs, even while sword fighting. Cooking, in other words, is a big part of Breath of the Wild. The game, however, isn't very forthcoming in terms of explaining its intricacies. If you go to the right spot on the Great Plateau, you'll get a short primer in how to use a cooking pot, but other than that, you're often on your own. So, how does cooking work in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild? Let's start with the basics. In order to cook proper meals, you'll need some ingredients and a cooking pot, which is one of these large metal bowls held over a fire. You can cook items by dropping them straight in a fire, but since the results they yield aren't as powerful, we're going to ignore that for the time being. To start cooking, go to your inventory and select an ingredient, then press hold. You can put up to five ingredients into Link's arms. Once you're done, quit the inventory and stand close to the cooking pot, where you'll be prompted to press A to start cooking. Press that and Link will do the rest. Now at this point, you need to listen closely, because your culinary efforts will make one of three noises. If you hear this, you're doing just fine. Good job. If you hear a little xylophone jingle in there like this, though, you're making something really special. Get crashy, smashy noises like this, however, and I'm afraid you've stuffed it right up. The food will be edible, just about, just don't expect it to refill many heart containers. Whichever noise you get, at the end of the cooking process you'll be rewarded with a dish. Here's some simmered fruit, for example. Depending on the ingredients you used, however, you might also get an adjective before the name of the dish itself. Either hearty, energising, enduring, fireproof, chilly, spicy, electro, hasty, sneaky, mighty, or tough. These words serve as indicators for the different effects you can apply to Link by cooking and eating food, which is why paying attention to your ingredients while cooking in Breath of the Wild is so important. We'll get on to explaining each of the food types in just a second, but first, it's important to understand ingredients will do one of three things. Restore hearts, add a bonus effect to the meal, or extend the amount of time a bonus effect is applied. Right, with that out of the way, let's get back to those adjectives. A meal can be hearty, which will recover all hearts and give you temporary extra hearts. It can be energising, which restores stamina. Enduring, which provides temporary extra stamina. There's fireproof, which helps you resist fire. Chilly, which helps you resist heat. Spicy, helping you resist the cold. There's electro, which gives you resistance against shock. This one's particularly useful, as getting zapped normally makes you drop your weapon. Hasty dishes will increase your movement speed. Sneaky recipes increase stealthiness. Mighty food boosts your attack value. And tough increases your defense. And lest we forget, eating food will naturally restore your hearts, giving you back double the health that would have been restored if you simply ate the ingredient raw. And now you've got to grips with what those key effects are, you can start planning what dishes you're going to cook in order to thrive in Breath of the Wild's different environments. It's important to remember, however, that only one bonus effect can be applied to each meal. Throw in more than one effect applying ingredient and they'll cancel each other out, effectively wasting both. It is possible to apply more than one bonus effect to Link at a time, but in order to do this you'll have to feed him a different meal for each effect. But while you can only cook one bonus effect into each meal, it's handy to bear in mind these bonus effects will stack. If you're making spicy simmered fruit for its cold resisting properties for instance, adding more spicy peppers will give you a higher level of protection. And those are really the only things you need to bear in mind when cooking in Breath of the Wild, the rest is experimentation. As long as you're wary not to cancel out any bonus effects, you're free to experiment and see what kind of potent dishes you can come up with. Don't worry too much about whether you think adding honey to a dish with mushrooms in it is likely to be gross or not, for example. Your focus should always be on the ingredients and the stats they bring to the pot, not how palatable you imagine the end result will be. And that, in essence, is how cooking in Breath of the Wild works. 
If you'd like to get a bit more in-depth, including a list of possible ingredients for each food type, there's a handy guide on Eurogamer.net. You can find a link in the description of this video. And if you'd like to see some more video on Breath of the Wild, including some real-life Breath of the Wild cooking, they're on screen right now. Do consider liking and subscribing if you fancy it, but if not, then no pressure. Either way, thank you very much for watching, and have a lovely day.